They said it would never need to stop. It sounded like science fiction, so we decided to find out for ourselves. Maxwell Chekumbatso, the Zimbabwean inventor whose unconventional ideas have baffled traditional engineers for years, once again, made a claim that seemed impossible a self-powered electric vehicle that requires no external charging, no plugs, no stations, no downtime, a car that theoretically could drive forever. We set out to test this in the most brutal, unrelenting, and transparent way possible. No simulations, no CGI illusions, no behind-the-scenes trickery, just the open road in an unyielding pursuit of truth. But before the journey began, it was critical to understand what made this machine different. Chikumbitso's innovation didn't emerge from a traditional EV playbook. His system wasn't simply a more efficient battery or an improved charging algorithm. It was a rethinking of energy itself. At the core of the vehicle is a magnetic resonator coil system that generates power as the vehicle moves. Some experts theorize it functions through an advanced RF radio frequency energy harvesting technique. Others describe it as a closed loop, kinetic feedback system that challenges standard electrical engineering frameworks. Regardless of the explanation, the results have left physicists and engineers deeply perplexed. Videos have circulated. Viral stories have emerged. Whispers from labs and amateur recordings have hinted at the existence of a car that doesn't stop. But no one had ever attempted a public, verified, long-distance test, until now. The vehicle in question is a sleek, four-door prototype futuristic in design, with minimalistic contours, seamless panels, and a softly glowing insignia marked MIT, representing Maxwell's Institute of Technology. His independent research outfit, it looks like the fusion of a luxury EV SUV and a concept hypercar, but its most striking feature is its absence of conventional components, there are no charging ports, no swappable batteries, and no visible connectors. Even the dashboard lacked a typical battery percentage indicator. In its place was an elegant, constantly pulsing energy monitor, displaying what appeared to be a self-sustaining energy circulation loop. Before the drive, third-party engineers rigorously inspected the vehicle, sealing every panel with tamper-proof mechanisms. Not a single wire, panel, or screw went unchecked. The test route spanned over 1,000 kilometers, cutting across city outskirts, mountainous terrain, deep valleys, open highways, and sun-scorched desert plains. The plan was simple drive non-stop, except for mandated driver swaps, and document every moment. Cameras were mounted inside and out, drones followed from above, and engineers, scientists, and skeptics accompanied the convoy in separate vehicles. Among them were an electrical engineering professor, a former EV mechanic, and a retired NASA systems analyst. As the car began to roll, there were no dramatic sounds, no ceremonial ribbon cuts, just silent, seamless movement. Within the first 100 kilometers, the onboard systems remained steady. The energy input continued to regenerate. The battery draw was nominal, and nothing hinted at depletion. We passed the 200 kilometers mark without incident, encountering traffic, elevation, changes, and rain still. The vehicle performed like a dream cool cabin temperatures, no overheating components, and no drop in power output. At 300 kilometers, quiet looks were exchanged. The data was clean. The onboard computer, connected to external monitors for transparency, showed no anomalies. The true challenge began at 340 kilometers a grueling mountain climb, notorious for draining EV batteries. But this car climbed effortlessly, torque consistent, energy circulation uninterrupted, the magnetic loop continued to pulse green, and the drive remained smooth. At 400 kilometers, we reached flatter terrain, allowing the vehicle to accelerate. It did so without hesitation. At 500 kilometers, where even premium EVs start to approach their limits. This prototype showed no signs of strain, the dashboard remained green, and the energy loop was steady. Nightfall eliminated any suspicion of hidden solar panels. There were no dips, no Sudan losses and no excuses. At 600 kilometers, the atmosphere inside the team shifted. Disbelief gave way. Two stunned silence. One engineer remarked, this isn't just stretching physics seats, rewriting them. The first driver described the experience as like piloting something out of a sci-fi novel. By 700 kilometers, People stopped wondering if it was real, they started wondering how dot the drive rolled. Past 800 kilometers. Still no signs of decline. At 850 kilometers, the skeptics had grown quiet. The wheels turned, the road disappeared beneath, and the energy loop inside kept flowing like a stream in perpetual motion. At 900 kilometers, there was a growing awareness that this vehicle would indeed make it to 1,000 kilometers. Not because of luck or clever engineering, but because its energy system was working as promised. At the 1,000 kilometers mark, we brought the car to a halt not out of necessity. But because we had reached our test's endpoint, most astonishingly, the energy system continued, reading full output. The battery status remained in the green. No loss. No overheating. No fatigue. Dot with all data logged, the engineers inspected every seal and connection. Everything was intact. Tamper indicators remained untouched. 
drone footage, sensor logs, thermal scans, and electromagnetic readings confirmed it all. No hidden sources of power, no interference, and no foul play. What we had witnessed was, by all current understanding, impossible. A car that required no charging, no fuel, and no external input just motion itself. What would this mean for the EV industry? For the trillion dollar charging infrastructure, for power grids and fossil fuel dependency, we reached out to experts. One told us, if this scales, everything changes. Another predicted, this could render traditional transport obsolete. Yet another, cautious but intrigued, said, I need to see a teardown before I believe it. So that's what we did next. The car was brought to an independent teardown lab, fully sealed from outside signals. Every step would be done under the eyes of third-party experts. The external body was examined first no hidden power sources, no wireless receivers, no solar units. Under the chassis, engineers uncovered a densely packed mesh of coils and a resonating device at its center. It pulsed softly, like the heartbeat of a machine. As wheels turned, this magnetic resonator generated current in real time, replenishing the power system without drawing from any external source. Even when stationary, it produced a minimal output. Ambient energy measurements were zero. No RF draw, no heat leakage. This was an isolated loop, a NASA analyst in the room, visibly shaken, remarked, I'd have said this was fake if I wasn't standing right here. The wheels revealed more, each axle housed kinetic amplifiers devices that converted rotational energy into stored power, which was then refed into the loop. Paired with ultra-low friction bearings, this setup created an efficiency feedback loop that outperformed any known regenerative system. Maxwell Chikambutso himself arrived midteardown.com and collected. He said simply, it's not discovery, it's understanding. When questioned about legality and regulation, he replied, governments won't have a choice once the public sees what's possible. The vehicle's software, his proprietary OS, was lean, offline, and focused on real-time performance not reliant on the cloud, not updatable over the air. When lab engineers attempted to force battery drain through stress simulations, the system responded by auto-balancing, self-correcting to avoid overload. Professors from a top-tier engineering institute tried to map the energy flow and failed. Why? Because there was no flow in the traditional sense. It wasn't stored then used, it was generated and used in the same moment. A synchronous system that shouldn't exist by conventional theory. Yet it did. The implications were staggering. No more charging stations, no more downtime. Delivery fleets could run non-stop. Rural areas could enjoy modern transport without ever connecting to a grid. Environmental groups hailed it as the zero footprint revolution, but not everyone was celebrating. Legacy automakers issued no comments. Charging network firms asked. For verification, a battery supplier warned off the record, if this spreads, we're done. Maxwell was asked if he'd sell the patent. He said only under one condition, full public access, free from monopolies. So far, no one's met that condition. Dot next came safety tests. Could the system overheat or fail? Maxwell said no it was self-regulating. We tested electrical faults, thermal overloads, mechanical stress. The system reacted instantly th down before damage occurred. Then came the real bombshell, using Maxwell specs. Engineers built a small-scale test rig, just a wheel, coils, and a control board. When spun manually, the device lit up an entire lab console, not perpetual, motion, but close. Motion sustaining motion. The concept was real. Social media exploded, the full 1,000 kilometers test video went viral, 50 million views in under 24 hours. DIers around the globe began building Maxwell-inspired systems, from scooters in Brazil to drone loops in Poland, to motion-powered delivery trikes in Kenya, the world was taking notice. Patent wars erupted, big firms claimed overlaps, Maxwell's team countered those patents never produced self-sustaining output. Judges demanded demos. One judge even rode in the prototype and left court speechless. Meanwhile, Nonprofits began delivering motion-powered tuk-tuks to Madagascar. The Netherlands proposed replacing buses with coil-powered public transit. Oil companies pivoted to building dynamic infrastructure, roads that enhance coil performance. The smart highway had taken on a whole new meaning. Maxwell's lab remained quiet. He refused to upgrade the original vehicle, saying, it already broke the world once. He instead published open ethical guidelines. No use in war. No surveillance. Only cooperative deployment. The manifesto was translated into 60 languages. Schools began teaching energy ethics. Inventions followed, a Moroccan teen's wheelchair, an Indonesian fisherman's canoe, an Australian teen's forever fan. We started this journey asking, can a car drive forever? We found a bigger truth. Energy doesn't have to be bought. It can be built, shared, sustained. Now, the road ahead isn't just long, it's infinite. And we're all on it, mile by mile, coil by coil, revolution by revolution.